This video is about amount concentration. So I've drawn two diagrams here, and you can see the red dots represent the solute particles in a certain volume. So if we count up the dots on the left side, we'll see one, two, three, four, five, there's six dots there. So we have six dots, and let's say the volume, <clears throat> let's say the volume here is two liters. So if that's two liters of solution and six dots of solute, then I can generate a, a rate here of three dots per liter. Six divided by two, three dots per liter. Now have a look at the second beaker. Let's say these contained, um, I don't know, let's say they're glasses of iced tea and the red dots are solute crystals of the iced tea. How do you think the first beaker, the beaker on the left, would taste compared to the solution on the right side? Think about that for a moment. Okay, did you think perhaps that they would that this one would taste less sweet? Well, here we have six dots in two liters of solution, and here we only have three dots. So you might be thinking, well, there's less solute, there's less flavor crystals here. Ah, but there's about half the volume. So let's do our counting here. We see that there are three dots, but now it looks like it's in about half the volume, so we'll say that's one liter. You see how the ratio comes out three dots? Per liter. The same that we had on the left side. So what we're representing here is concentration. And if you thought that the drinks would taste the same, you're right, because putting less solute in a smaller volume can still be the same ratio as more solute in a larger volume. So concentration is the term we give when we relate the amount of solute to the volume of solution. We know that we measure amount in moles, so we'll have the moles of the solute, and volume in this unit of amount concentration is always in liters. So if you know the volume in milliliters, be sure to convert it to liters. So you can see then that the unit for amount concentration is moles per liter. Now we can use variables and generate a formula here. Lowercase c is the symbol for concentration. N, as you're familiar with, is the symbol for amount. And capital V for volume. So c equals n over v. Now algebraically, you should be able to manipulate this equation to isolate for n. And in a different question, isolate for v. So generally, you'll be given two of the three variables, and you need to solve for the third. So try that now. Isolate n in this equation, and then isolate v. Pause the video, do that, and then check back. Okay, so to isolate for n, I will multiply by v on both sides. You'll see that that sets it up to cancel, and we finish with v times c equals n, or if you rewrite it with n on the left, n equals c times v. Now from n equals c times v, we can isolate v dividing by c, and we'll finish with v equals n over c. So when you know the moles and concentration, moles of solute and concentration of the solution, you can solve for volume. When you know the concentration of the solution and the volume, you can solve for moles. Just like when you know the moles of the solute and volume of solution, you can solve for c. Just make a point here that you may also see the units of concentration written as a capital M. For example, C equals 1.0 capital M, and that has the exact same meaning as 1.0 moles per liter. So it's just faster to type, faster to write, um, and you'll see that in different sources. So be prepared to see units of capital M or moles per liter, and they mean the same thing. Okay, so in example number one, I'm asking you to find the concentration of a solution containing 0.15 moles of solute in 50 mils of solution. So be prepared to recognize units that will help you identify the <clears throat> variables that you've been given. So here you can see we have N equals 0 0.15 moles and volume has been given as 50.0 milliliters. Now, knowing that you're going to be calculating concentration, you better convert this mils to liters. And so K 
keep in mind to maintain the sig figs when you do the unit conversion. So we had three sig figs here, and you'll see I still have three sig figs here. We are looking for C, and so we write the formula with the variable isolated that we're trying to solve for, and then substitute and compute. And we finish with, in terms of sig figs, you'll notice there's two here and three over here. So with this division, we'll go with two in the final answer. So 3.0 moles per liter. Okay, in example two, I'm asking you to find the volume of a 0.25 mole per liter solution of calcium chloride that would contain 0 0.010 moles of calcium chloride. So as you read the question, identify the given and required based on units and the words in the, um, in the question, and choose a formula with the variable isolated that you're looking to solve for. Go ahead, substitute, solve, finish with the correct number of sig figs and units, and then check back with the video. Okay, so looking for volume given concentration in moles, we substitute into V equals N over C and find 0 0.040 liters. Now regarding sig figs, both measurements here have two sig figs, and so I finished with two sig figs. In terms of units, we had the moles in the numerator here divided by moles per liter, and following along, if you're dividing by a fraction, you can multiply it by the reciprocal, and you'll see how these moles cancel which leaves us with liters. And so we have the volume measured in liters. If you wanted to report that in milliliters, then you could just convert to milliliters and we would have 40 milliliters. Now in terms of sig figs, that is the, that trailing zero would be not, wouldn't be counted as significant. And so 4.0 times 10 to the one milliliters would clarify the two sig figs. Okay, moving on to a third example. Okay, example three, I'm asking you for the mass of potassium nitrate dissolved in 250 mils of a 0.100 mole per liter solution of potassium nitrate. So just to be clear, in terms of the question here, we have 250 milliliters of a solution, we know the concentration, 0 0.100 moles per liter, and that means that there's potassium and nitrate ions dissolved here, and the question is, what mass of the KNO3 was actually dissolved to make this solution? Okay, so I realize I haven't asked you for amount, I've asked you for mass, and so you'll need to draw on some prior knowledge to figure this one out. So noticing we're looking for mass, given volume, and concentration. Now noticing that we're gonna be working with concentration and your volumes in milliliters, be sure to change that milliliters to liters. That 250 has a trailing zero, so we're count two sig figs, so 0 0.25 liters keeps the two sig figs. So as you think about the relationships you know, given C and V, we can certainly find N, and that's where we begin our solution. So we can look for amount of solute. by calculating n equals c times v. So once we have our amount of solute, now we need to convert that to mass. So you can either use, well, I'll show it over here, you can either use your formulas, if you're using formulas, so moles amount times molar mass, or you can work factor label and figure out the molar mass of the potassium nitrate and substitute and compute. So either the formula or factor label at this point. Okay, and so with a molar mass of 101.11, we finish with 2.53 grams of KNO3. Okay, just wanna be super clear that that is the mass of the solute. So 
later in grade 12 chemistry, we do some work with calorimetry and we end up being interested in the mass of the solution, which really is the combination of solute and solvent here. And in, in these calculations, we are determining the mass of these actual particles that have dissolved. So we are not including the mass of the water here. So just to be very clear, right, that it is the mass of the solute that we're able to determine here. If we wanted the mass of the solution, then we could work at it through knowing the volume of the solution and the density of the solution. Um, you know, experimentally, we could determine that on a balance, um, measure the mass of the solution, but the mass of the solute is the mass that we're solving for in this lesson.